No matter how exciting hopping on a plane and getting to a new destination is, it can be daunting getting through the airport security line. Especially if you're behind someone who's taking forever to get their shoes off or didn't realize peanut butter counts as a liquid. This video features 10 TSA hacks to help you breeze through the airport like a boss. I'm Tom from Pack Hacker. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ringing that bell icon for notifications. Our team has traveled all over the world. From the Czech Republic to Malaysia to New Zealand, we've seen our fair share of airports. This video covers everything from what to wear, all the way down to interacting with TSA agents. So let's get ready for takeoff. As much as we love snacks, we're always mindful of which snacks to pack. Certain items like protein bars and large cheese wheels can set off the x-ray. Due to the density and the organic compounds inside, these scanners can pick up something that seems to be threatening. So if you want to be safe when it comes to snacks, pack them in a Ziploc bag and put them in a separate bin so TSA can see them. For international trips, make sure you check the restrictions on the food that you're bringing into the country. For example, Japan doesn't allow you to bring meat and some other animal products. This includes jerky, so you'll want to choose a different snack that's not restricted. Otherwise, you'll spend more time going through customs if you have something that needs to be thrown out. Also, be aware of foods that are actually considered liquids. According to TSA.gov, cream cheese, peanut butter, yogurt, and anything spreadable counts as a liquid and must be 3.4 ounces or less. The 311 rule for flying with liquids is easy enough to follow. In case you're not sure, it means liquids, gels, or creams must be smaller than 3.4 ounces in a clear one quart bag. And the limit is one bag per passenger. Just note that the 3.4 ounce or 100 milliliter limit is for the bottle size, not the amount of liquid you're taking with you. Our staff writer Randia learned this the hard way when she had a large bottle that was only a quarter full confiscated in Mexico. So trying to bring a full size bottle with only a little bit of liquid left over is against the rules. We suggest using bottles with the capacity imprinted on them. So there's no question or debate. A couple of human gear go tubs will do the trick here. You can also get a toiletry bag like the Tombin 3D Organizer Cube that was designed for 311 airport requirements. Speaking of liquids, we always carry an empty water bottle to the airport and fill it up once we get to the terminal. It's more sustainable and it'll save you from buying expensive water bottles at the airport. Just make sure it's completely empty before you go through security. It can be frustrating when you think you're following all the rules, but you still trigger the x-ray for additional screening. When this happens, don't get upset. Just remember that the machine isn't perfect and sometimes it has trouble identifying dense objects. Rendai has noticed that the body scanner frequently flags her hair, especially when it's up in a high bun. This is common with thicker hairstyles because the scanner just detects a dense object and it's not sure what it is. Optus in particular can cause concern that you may be concealing something underneath. If you realize that something like this is constantly alerting the TSA, make sure to build that into your schedule and arrive a little bit earlier to the airport or try to change it. This can also happen with items like books and certain electronics. I used to travel with a large battery bank that would always get flagged and have to be inspected. After I switched to a smaller one, I didn't have any issues. So if a specific product is causing suspicion, swapping it out for an alternative will usually eliminate the problem. Pack Hacker Pro member Jeff started carrying his shampoo bar with a Matador flat pack soap bar case after the metal container he was using was flagged repeatedly. The Matador soap bar case was featured in our awesome travel products video, Community Edition, based on Jeff's fantastic recommendation. Pro is full of experienced travelers that offer smart solutions to problems like this. If you want more travel tips and suggestions on gear to make your travel more streamlined, check out the link above or below to learn more about Pack Hacker Pro. Your outfit should be as minimal as possible so you have less to take off when you try to get through the airport security. As a rule of thumb, don't wear anything that will set off the metal detector. No matter how stylish you want to look while flying, wearing a bunch of jewelry and accessories means more time you'll have to spend taking them off and then putting them back on. Consider packing these items in your carry-on instead so you can put them on right before you land. You can also find non-metallic accessories that can stay on as you go through the security checkpoint. For example, a paracord bracelet with a plastic buckle or for a belt, something like the Arcade Midnighter that has a plastic buckle instead of metal, which I use on trips all the time. This doesn't just apply to accessories either. If you wear a hoodie or a jacket, you're going to have to take them off anyway. 
And it should go without saying, but wearing shoes that take a lot of effort to get on and off is another no-no. You should opt for shoes that you can get in and out of quickly instead of strappy sandals, for example. And keep in mind that you may need to walk barefoot on the airport floor where thousands of others have walked just that day. So choose a pair that's easy to get off and that you can generally wear socks with. So you've got your minimal outfit planned and your shoes are easy to get on and off. Great. If your shoes do have to be untied, it's no big deal. Just make sure you do it before you get to the front of the line. Don't be that person that waits till the absolute very last second to take off their belt or everything out of their pockets either. We prefer putting our essentials in a sling and avoiding the dreaded pocket shuffle completely. Just load up the sling with your wallet, phone, and keys and throw the whole thing into a bin. It's one of our favorite air travel hacks. Make sure your boarding pass and ID are out too so you can pass them to the agent quickly and keep it moving. Having your boarding pass up on your phone can save a bunch of time too. Many airline apps allow you to do this already, or you can use the built-in digital wallet on your phone. Packing your bag strategically is one of the most important things that you can do before getting to the airport. Put your toiletry bag in either a front pocket or on top of your suitcase so you can grab it easily. The same goes for laptops and tablets. You don't want an overweight bag either, so make sure you weigh everything before heading out on your trip. You can do this without a specified luggage scale too. Just use the regular scale you have at home. Stand on the scale and take down your weight, then grab your bag and do the same thing. Subtract that weight by your weight, and then boom, you've got the weight of your bag. Pro tip, using packing cubes keeps your clothing organized and also gives you added privacy in case you don't want the TSA agents seeing your underwear. Have you ever wondered why programs like TSA PreCheck, Global Entry, and Clear are worth it? Well, the answer is yes. These trusted traveler programs will get you through airport security faster than the normal line. According to the TSA website, TSA PreCheck members save on average five minutes each time they go through the airport. This varies across the board though. Sometimes you can save a lot more time and other times you hardly save any time at all. One of the most useful perks is not having to take your belt or shoes off or take your laptop or toiletries out to put them in another bin. You can just leave everything in your bag and leave your belt and shoes on. It's like a club for people who aren't playing around when it comes to getting through airport security with no issues. And here's a pro tip, add your known traveler ID number to your password manager or as a phone contact so you always have it on hand. Clear also has a free app called ClearPass, which makes re-entry into the United States easier. You don't have to fill out paper custom and border protection forms. Just make a profile with your passport details, add a flight number, and then show the QR code when you're going through that checkpoint. However, you do have to pay extra for access to the Clear security line for quicker screening during domestic travel, which we found to be faster than pre-check at some locations. Also, a lot of credit card companies will reimburse the fees of signing up for these programs based on the benefits you have with your card. So make sure to check those before shelling out to sign up. We prefer traveling with a single carry-on backpack as opposed to rolling luggage for a couple different reasons. First, no check bag means no waiting at the airline counter to drop it off. Second, there is no chance of the airline losing your bag since it'll be with you the entire time. And third, you won't have to wait at the baggage claim carousel after you arrive. Just get off the plane and go, it's an amazing feeling. I traveled the world for a total of two years living out of a single 40 liter backpack. Believe me, it's possible. It all starts with having a packing list and finding small, lightweight items that fit your needs and your bag. Over on packhacker.com, we have packing lists for digital nomads, earth conscious travelers, and even people who want to vacation on a budget. We'll leave links down in the description below so you can check them out if you're interested. While there's no travel backpack that fits everyone, we do have a couple of recommendations. The Air Travel Pack 2 is minimalist and sleek, and the GORUCK GR2 is nearly indestructible for long-term travel. We do a lot of travel backpack reviews over on our site, so make sure to go check those out if you're interested too. Links down below. Even though we prefer traveling with just a backpack, it is not for everyone. If you'd rather use rolling luggage, opt for one made with soft fabric instead of a hard suitcase. Softer luggage is more malleable, so you have some flexibility if you've got a lot of items to pack. And if the overhead bins are almost full by the time you board the plane, a soft suitcase will be easier to stuff in between the other bags, not to mention the conveyor belt when you're going through security. When it comes to your personal item, try choosing a bag with a pass-through for luggage handles in the back. This way, you can just stick it on your suitcase when you're waiting in that long security line, and it's easier to cruise through the airport with. It's especially helpful if your personal item is on the heavy side. A few smaller packs we recommend with pass-throughs are the AirFit Pack 3, 
Heim Planet Travel Pack, and the Peak Design Everyday Backpack. And with all these bags, the less dangling straps, the better, which means avoiding full-featured hiking bags. This will allow your bag to easily glide on the security conveyor belt without getting caught up on the x-ray. If your bag is on the strappy side, make sure to tuck all the straps in inside of a bin before putting it through security. TSA agents can sometimes get a bad rap, but at the end of the day, they are just doing their jobs. Your goal is to get onto the plane as quickly and stress-free as possible, so whatever the TSA agent says goes. No matter how much you protest, they likely won't change their mind about confiscating an item that they deem unsafe. It doesn't matter if you were allowed to bring it on the plane at a different airport that was more relaxed. Being uncooperative just means wasted time for everyone involved, including everyone behind you in line. It could even cause you to miss your flight, which just isn't worth it. We're not saying you have to suck up to the TSA or be nice to agents with bad attitudes. Just follow the rules and don't give them a hard time. The same applies to flight attendants and airport security staff in the terminal. Flight attendants have the ability to kick you off the plane if you're being unpleasant, and they don't hesitate to use it when necessary. Trust us, we've seen it firsthand. And believe it or not, airport retail staff can call and have you removed if they feel uncomfortable too. Just treat everyone with respect and you won't have any problems. So there you have it, 10 TSA hacks to help you get through airport security faster. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if there's a tip that we missed, make sure to drop it down in the comments below because some of the best tips come from you, the Pack Hacker community, right here on YouTube. Thanks for keeping me here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.